I thank God this morning. Um, my name is Joseph Babu. I'm born again. I love Christ as Lord and Savior of my soul. And um, I'm grateful for this part. He has taken me in this journey of faith, an uh, exciting one. And I am grateful to God that He saw it right to give His Son on the cross for my sake. Not because I deserved it, but because God was gracious uh, and is able to, able to give His Son on the cross for my sake. I saw the light, I accepted it. And today I'm standing before you because I enjoy the love of God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm married to one wife, Susan, um, whom we have been serving God together for a couple of years. And I'm grateful. And between, uh, um, between us, God has blessed us with the two sons. Uh, it's only that um, they fellowship in different churches. But I thank God. If you see my sons, you wonder where they got the height from. But my wife is taller than me, definitely. I look at them like this these days. But I thank God. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. Amen. Uh, sometime last year, I was sitting in the office in the morning as I was reading my Bible. And I got a message. I got a revelation that um, it worked in me so fast, you know. It, 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 it kind of ignited a fire in me. And uh, I stopped for a moment. I almost called, actually, Apostle to ask for a service to come and preach that message instantly. And I remember Pastor Gitao came and I told him I would share that message. You remember, Pastor, you came to the office and said you share a message. Maybe you have forgotten. But I said that um, because I was sitting in the office and um, I was reading my Bible. And I thought, I started thinking about my business. And uh, something closed in my mind um, when it comes to how we interact and what we share between ourselves as we pray for one another, as we hold together uh, for one another as believers in the house of God, maybe as family members, as friends. 
And I realized that um, actually when you are there, you are your brother's um, answer or you are an answer to your brother's prayer. You are an answer to your sister's prayer, but you have never known this. And um, what happened is that um, as I was thinking on what was going on in my mind that morning was something that I, I, I felt I needed at that hour. It leads to business. And like, how many people have I told to pray with me? Praise God. How many people have I told to share, I mean, to hold my hand and pray with me for a particular need? And I discovered I have some friends that we have related for a couple of years. Not one, not two, not ten. I think now we're into 20, around 23 years of fellowship. Praise God. 23 years of fellowship, and we pray over various issues. And as I was reflecting on what came into my heart, I discovered we need a revelation, a revelation that tells you or will tell you that at times you pray, you fast, and you fast with your bro and your sister in the Lord in the house of God, or even our family members, you talk to them, you even pray for them. And yet, you are actually the answer to their prayer. Praise God. And at that time, I realized, um, I don't know, maybe you have never known what I do. He's going to tell you what I do today so that you can also become a blessing unto me. <laughs> I'm a business person, and I actually repair cars. And as I was thinking about my business that morning, I discovered that I need business, I need a friend who has got a car, or I need a customer who has got a car. And then I all of a sudden discovered that among the people that I pray with, each of those people has got two cars. Praise God. Each of those people have got worse. You listen to this message carefully because it's going to transform you, it's going to change you. Now, every once in a month, we meet to pray and we hold our hands together. And among, we have a book, we have several books. For those 23 years, we have written prayer items. Every Sunday we meet to pray, we write prayer items. So, over time, we check what God has answered, we thank God for it. And then, uh, among the prayers in those books is about my business. Praise God. But among the eight guys in that group, very interesting, I don't know whether it is because of the distance where one lives and where I work from, but none come to my workshop. Now, if I called my friends to pray for my business and they have what I need, what other answer should I get from God? Are you getting my message? While I was meditating on that, I was listening to Joyce Meyer one day and she said she was praying for a sister or a member of the church who required a mattress and she went to pray to God to provide a mattress for this member of the church. But God reminded her that you don't have actually to pray because the answer to this sister's prayer is actually you. Because you, Joyce Meyer, can afford a mattress. So why do you want to pray for a sister to be blessed with a mattress and yet you have all the money to buy her, her mattress? So she walked out and went and got a mattress. I imagine if, for example, these friends of mine, when they are holding hands with me, as we pray, uh, are you hearing me? Am I clear to you? You know, this, this thing here, we bought it a lot of money with the pastor Getau. And we bought it for our pastors, but they refused to use, so I'm the one who uses it, because they don't want to use it. So I will use it until it becomes clear to you. So brethren, we could be here, in HBC, we meet every Tuesday or any other day that we meet, don't we? We, in several groups, we meet every day or any other day, don't we? We are friends that we pray together. And the people have brought prayer items before us, and we hold our hands to pray for those prayer items. And some of them, or majority of them, or virtually all of them, the answers are with us. Praise God. So that then, as we call to God and fast to God, 
It is because we have not obeyed what God would want us to be or want us to do. Praise God. So then you have held your hands together with your brother and sister and you are praying for food in a house and in your house you are fringe full of food. You have a lot of, you even have a store that you sell cilios. Praise God. And yet, your sister and your brother came and told you, bro, I need prayers. What kind of prayers? My house has no food. Praise God. So the topic of my message today is, you are or you could be the answer to your brother's sister. Brothers, I mean brothers or sisters, prayer. Praise God. Can we turn to the book of James, chapter number two? Book of James, chapter number two. And read there. I have a couple of scriptures that I will share with you just to help us understand what I'm trying to say today. The message God puts in my heart. And can help us to become better brothers, better sisters in the house of God. One as if you were. Praise God. So I'm saying today, you are or you could be the answer to your brother or your sister's prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen? So in the book of James, chapter number 2, verse 14 to 26, the Bible says, James, chapter number 2, 14 to 26, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith, but has no deeds, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and their food, if, you, one of, if one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and be well, uh, well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you are faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. And I will, sh I will show you my faith with what I do. You believe that there is one God? You believe there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and they shudder. Uh, listen to that next statement. Can you read for yourself? Yes, you have learned it for? For yourself, as I identify myself as I was also listening to this message. So that is what the Bible says. Then now I move on to verse number, I mean, uh, 20, you have learned for yourself, verse number 21. Uh, was not our ancestor, or ancestor, Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see, uh, you see, that, you see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction, as the body without the spirit is dead, so uh, faith without deed is dead. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and we want to bless you for the reading of your one this morning. As we share together, my Father, I pray that we may speak to our hearts, we may speak to our individual lives, you may speak to us collectively as a congregation so that my Father, we may bless one another and the Lord become a blessing unto each one of us. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, James was writing those things because he had discovered that in the fellowship that was there among the believers, there are things that were not right and people were talking about faith, but they were not putting their faith into action. And he says, our faith must be, or must work hand in hand with our actions. Praise God. So we conclude from the scripture we have just learned that faith and action go hand in hand and our actions are expected to prove our faith. 
all of us share our faith and we say how much you believe in God, how much you trust in God. But when it comes to putting our faith into action, in as far as, you know, showing love to one another is concerned, that is missing in many of us, in many congregations, in many fellowships, where people come together to pray together, where people come together to fellowship together. Faith in action is portrayed, brethren, in the love that we show for one, to one another as believers, and the concern that we show to one another, and that should be reflected in our brotherly love. Because if you have a brother, as the scripture has said, and your brother has got a need, or your sister has got a need, and you have not addressed that need, and yet God has given you the capacity, the ability, the resources to meet your brother's need, then that faith you are talking about is failing because it doesn't appear in action. Faith to appear in action is whereby you who has been blessed with something, and you discover that your sister has got a need, or your brother has got a need, then you meet that need. That is putting faith into action. One as if you were. Our brother love and our sisterly love, brothers and brethren, is truly shown. When we share in the needs of others, when we get involved in helping others solve their problems or overcoming their life challenges, and challenges are many, praise God. When you look at people that you relate with, let me begin with the house of God. When you look at one another, many a times people come together or come to Sunday service when they look neat and clean. Their faces are glittering because when you woke up in the morning, we went to the bathroom, showered, you know, applied lotion. But there could be in our midst a heart that is hurting for a need, praise God. Or heart is hurting because there's a challenge in their life. Now, it is good when you are staying together as a family of believers, that you learn how to embrace your brother, to embrace your sister who is, God, who is in need. When you do that, brethren, as you have learned from the word of God, you put your faith into action. But if you are staying together as we do, and we come together, there's no concern for one another in terms of even trying to find out how your brother uh, is doing, how your sister is doing. Could there be a need in their life that you can address, and I will tell you what. My discovery is that many a times, more often than not, you'll find actually, as long as you individually, you are doing okay, as long as you as a family are doing okay, you are not bothered much or more about what others are going through. At times you can greet each other and you just tell them, I wish you a good week ahead. Praise God. But that, that person could have come to church because he or she was coming to seek solace in the house of God. There are needs that are affecting them. How do we respond to those needs if we cannot, you know, uh, put our, our, our faith into action by becoming a blessing to them, by becoming an answer to their prayer? And uh, you will agree with me. Every time you meet for HBC, don't we ask the prayer items we pray for? Do we or we don't? When we meet for several groups, uh, uh, sessions, do we ask for items to pray for? Even us, when we meet, because we meet as leaders of the church to pray. And the apostle will tell us, what items can we pray for today? <laughs> Praise God. And you discover the things that we are going to list there. Most likely, not most likely actually, let me say that you have an answer for them. Because if it's about food, Many of us have got food in the house, isn't it? So are you willing to share with your brother so that then you are not just holding hands to pray, but you are holding hands to tell him, bro, I hear you, you have a need for something in the house, in your house. This is a hundred shillings that you can take and buy that which you need in your house. In my house, I have extra candy of unga. Can I share with you? Praise God. Bwana Asifiwe. Without proving our faith through our deeds towards one another is equivalent to having a dead faith. That is the word of God. Praise God. If you cannot show that you are truly concerned about your fellow believers' issues, and you come and testify to us how God has been gracious and good to you, uh, that 
will not be earning you marks in as far as God is concerned. Praise God. Our deeds towards one another justify our faith. Praise God. How we treat one another, how we respond to one another's call justifies our faith. Praise God. If we are to win God's favor, brethren, or God's attention, and attract his favor as well, we must practice our faith with acts of loving one another. We must practice our faith by caring for one another. We must practice our faith by showing concern for one another. We must practice our faith by supporting them for their physical needs. Tell your neighbor, physical needs. Physical needs. You know, sometimes you can go and then tell someone, let's praise God. But if they are hungry, if it's not by design of fast, then you cannot be impressing them. Praise God. So there are many of us who have got physical needs here. Some have got problem with house rent. Others have got problem with school fees. Others have got problem with the food in their house. Others have got even other small, small needs. But they're affecting their daily lives. So when we come together to pray, not just hold hands, because you are the person carrying the answer to their prayer. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. Praise God. You are the answer to your brother's prayer. if you were. You are the answer to your sister's prayer. Therefore, brethren, as, as we come together to fellowship, let us be ready and willing to sacrifice for one another in the house of God. And even outside the house of God. Because we are family members. Don't we have family members? In your family, you could be more endowed than others. You could be more blessed than your other family members. How do you take care of their needs when it comes to, you know, their physical needs, even spiritual needs? How do you take care of them? Because your family members who are not in the same level with you, who again also call you because they know you as a Christian, as a believer, and tell you, pray for me or pray with me. How do you respond? And when they call you, they are telling to pray for school fees. And I dare say, even as you pray for your brother's school fees to be available, you have money in your bank account. Isn't that true? Praise God. You know what has been happening in the, in the ministry of, or in the, in the, in the, within the family of believers? People come to pray, or people come together when they are giving testimony. They say things that are very difficult. And your next person, the brother or, or sister who is next to you, says, yes, indeed, things have been very Praise God. And yet, the person who is echoing your, echoing your words that things have been very difficult, in a back account, things are spilling over. Praise God. Because they have money in the bank account. But because you said things are very bad, and they don't want to become a blessing unto you, they also say things are... <laughs> Praise God. Now, what happens that scenario is that all of you will hold hands together and start calling upon the name of the Lord. If God was to speak to you at that particular time and rebuke you, would you accept the rebuke? Because you said things are bad. But we know, or God knows, because there's no secret to him, that in your bank account, you actually have sufficient funds to pay school fees for your sister's daughter or son. Praise God. Even friends, we are, besides being believers here, are members of the same church, and three friends, are and three friends, or out there we are friends who are in need, how do we respond to them, to their needs, if we are telling them about our faith? When they call, when they talk to us about what they are going through or what they, they are experiencing, how do we respond as believers? Do we respond by telling them, Paul, it's going to be well with you? God, see you through. <laughs> Hallelujah. We also have business associates that we relate with, people that we interact with. Someone can tell you their business maybe is going through a challenge. You, you in a position, either to influence somewhere or even to give them money, but you also see the same language that everybody else is speaking out there and forgetting this is your brother. Even for your enemies, you can as well respond in a way that proves that you are a believer, that you are a Christian. Praise God. Even strangers, you can actually stand with them because you are different from them. You want to prove 
or to show them that when you tell them that you are a believer, you are a Christian, indeed it is true. Because you don't tell them, God see you, but you tell them, bro, how can I stand with you? Is it food that you require in your house? Is it money you need to boost your business? Is it money that you need in order to support, to pay school fees for your child? Or is it something that you want to start? How many of us who are in a position of influence, maybe you're in a high office, you're employed somewhere, you are a boss somewhere, you run a business somewhere, but we have, we have a number of our young people who are looking for jobs. And they come and tell you, Brother Babu, I am looking for a job. Okay, what have you done, A, B, C, D? I say, yes, God will open a door. And yet, Brother Babu is in a position to talk to a friend, to influence somewhere that that young man or that young lady can get a job. Praise God. I'm talking about showing love for one another, being an answer to your brother's prayer. Because when that young person comes to you and they need a job, all you need to do is to make a call. All you need to do is make a difference. Praise God. And that young man will be helped. When that person is helped, you have become an answer to the prayer. That is why God, that is why God has positioned you there. Hallelujah. That is why God has given you that opportunity. So that you can become your brother's answer to their prayer. You can become your sister's answer to their prayer. Hallelujah. Even your enemies. I had an incident about last month, I think. Last year, a fellow came to me <laughs> and he called me. Then your neighbor chairman was called. <laughs> I was called 65,000 by this fellow. Praise God. Uh, he called me 65,000 shillings. He says he will refund. Maybe he has not called me, maybe he will refund. Maybe, let me say, I gave him money, but he said uh, he misguided me somehow. But I pushed him and he said, I will pay back your money. Uh, last month, one Saturday morning, as I go to work, uh, he sends me a text on WhatsApp, but actually a video clip. And he sends me a video clip of his son in hospital. All right? And he writes there, he has the audacity <laughs> to call me, bro. Hi, bro. Hi. And I followed him for my 65,000 for quite a while. He says, hi, bro. My son is admitted in the hospital. And I'm low on money. I'm low on cash. Please, can you lend me 5,000 shillings? I'll refund next week on Wednesday. Brethren, I actually laughed. I laughed. But... I remember the scripture in the book of Proverbs, which says, when your enemy is in need, or your enemy is thirsty, what do you do to him? Eh? That scripture says, when your enemy is thirsty, give him water, and you are going to put charcoal off on the top of his. <laughs> but also it consists to say, and the God will reward. Now when I, <laughs> I pick the word, reward. And luckily enough, that day I had 5,000 shillings. So I laughed. And I went to the book of Proverbs and opened that scripture. And he said, God, what have you said here? You are enemy. So my enemy has asked for money. <laughs> and instantly, instantly, brethren, I sent 5,000 shillings. I'm still talking to God about my reward. Eh? <laughs> I know it's going to come. But I'm saying, I'm trying to say that even your enemies... Act, show your faith in action so that God can also respond to your situations. Amen? One as if you were. By putting our faith into action through acts of love and sacrifice, brethren, to one another is part of fulfilling God's... I'm saying this. By putting our faith into action through acts of love and sacrifice for one another is part of fulfilling God's assignment for us as believers. Amen? So assignment that God has given us is not just to preach the gospel, but also to share to share what God has given us in the family of believers. Amen? So the assignment today I'm calling us to fulfill, praise God, is embracing one another as a family of believers and sharing in the needs, in the situations, in the circumstances of your brother and your sister. If you do so, my brother, 
I want to assure you, as our theme of the year calls us, you will be fulfilling the assignment of God. You are accomplishing the assignment of, of God. Praise God. Who knows what is assignment in Kiswahili? Who knows what's assignment in Kiswahili? <laughs> Praise God. What's it work out? Eh? Nani najua assignment kwa Kiswahili ni nini? Eh? Wa? Wajibu. Okay, Pastor Mkanina Mungu anasema wajibu, apostle the same who says a different thing. Eh? So? So is so, safari, safari mtu wa kutoka coast anasema soesi nani mwingine sivi <laughs> soesi praise god who knows maybe i can warn you hallelujah anyway i want to know whether you know but that is none of the none of the above that you have said you know what i yesterday i was thinking about this message and uh, one time tumesomewa hapa sana sivi nani alitusomea lakini kuna mtu amesomea hapo huko mnaongea na kisungu mingi sana so i was thinking today i can preach in kiswahili thank you apostle has made a lot of effort to preach in kiswahili <laughs> some of us have struggled but i want him to preach this message today in kiswahili and uh, actually two versions i don't know what me really not to preach in kiswahili but i naendelea kutoka hapo na kiswahili naendelea kutoka hapo kwa kiswahili Na ningeomba tuangalie kitabu cha Isaya Isaya 58 sita kufika 12 Kitabu cha Isaya 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 Can we read <laughs> Yes Can we read Can we read Isaya O Isaya 58 kuanzia 6 12 Can we read that one I'm trying to emphasize on you being the answer to your brothers and sisters prayer. Amen. Is it is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of yoke to set the oppressed free and break yoke? It is it not to share your food with the, with the hungry and provide for their poor for the poor wanderer with the shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood then you are right will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of, of the lord will be your rear guard then you will call and the Lord will answer you. You will cry for help and you will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of the oppression, with the pointing of finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in the behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your right and your night will become like the noonday. Uh, the, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land and will strengthen you a frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Praise God. Verse number 12 says, you, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the ancient foundations. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, restorer of uh, streets with dwellings. Praise God. Mungu anasungumsa juu ya aina ya mfungo. Praise God. Mfungu, mfungu ambao unampendesa. Ambao ni mfungo wa kweli. The true fasting. So when you go to fast, you are fasting over so many other issues. But referring to the scripture that you have just read, God was trying to teach the children of Israel what he wants to see from them. Because he had already realized people go to God because of their own things. But God is interested in a fast that brings change to other people's life. This is why he is saying that you know what I am looking, the true fast I am looking for from you people is when you release those who are oppressed. 
is when you share food to the people who have no food, the angry. It's when you clothe the naked. Praise God. Now, there are so many people who are in our midst, who are in need of those things that God wants to see in our true fast. Praise God. And so, when God is lighting these things, he wants you as a believer to, you, to hear that. So that before you go and they fast before him with your own things, you know, you, you want to go to God and talk about a car. Praise God. You want to go to God and talk about a house. Praise God. You want to go to God and talk about a piece of land. Praise God. You want to go to God and talk about a flat that will be giving you money. I am not saying those things are bad. But before you speak to God about those things, first of all, care about those who are in your midst, who are in need. In case there's a brother in the house of God, a sister in the house of God, or a brother in your family, or a sister in your family, or a relative in your family who is in need of help. Before you go to God with the fasting for a new car, because you already have one, or maybe you desire a car, first of all, talk to God about this person's need. But before you even talk to God about it, find out whether you have an answer to their need. Praise God. This is why Isaiah, book of Isaiah, talking, I mean, God talking through prophet Isaiah, he is saying, consider, consider first the people in your midst who are hungry before you come to me with a fast. Praise God. Because when God is looking at you, you left your house. Your house is full of food. And in your bank account, you have enough money to pay school fees for that child who is in need of school fees. But you have gone before him with a fast of three days, a fast of seven weeks, and a fast of 21 days, and possibly 40 days like Jesus did. And all you have gone to do is not about your brother, it's not about that naked person or the foreigner who is in your midst who has nowhere to sleep. We have had people from as far as Sudan coming to Ruiru here. And some of them maybe they will come and clog into a small house. Those are the wanderers that God is referring to. You, because you have been blessed and you have a good house, you have resources to minister to you that person's need. What have you done about it before you go to God with your fast? Praise God. When we do things that God has called us in that book of Isaiah there, when you do those things to one another, when we meet their physical needs by supplying them with the food, by meeting their every physical need they have, then we will be putting our faith into practice, and that will attract God's favor, as we have seen in, the, in, in verse number 8, where God is talking about the things that are going to happen to you when you show concern and show love for one another. Praise God. And that is emphasized in the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 2, verse 42. Maybe we can go there. Acts, Acts the book of Acts. 42, I mean, uh, 2 verse, verse 42. And you know, brethren, when you read that, uh, that portion of scripture, it talks about how brethren were coming together, they would, pray, they would pray together, they would fellowship together. But within their midst, there are people who are in need. And uh, as a way of showing love and concern for one another, these people would pull their things together, they would actually go as far as selling their property and share among them, praise God. Why would brethren in the past, or as we stand in the Bible, why would they come together Someone who owns the land, sells the land, bring it before the apostles, who would sell property, maybe you are a car, maybe you are a house, and bring together. And it is brought in the presence of everyone and shared together. That is what fellowship is all about. Praise God. Can we see Acts, Acts, Acts um, 2, uh, 42, what does it say? They devoted themselves to apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of, fre- uh, of bread, and to, to pray. Everyone was filled with the hour, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All believers were together, and, and everything in common, selling their possessions and the goods, and they gave to anyone who had Praise God. Apostle, your church is 
Didn't you tell us? Is it you told us? Yes, I think you mentioned some time back. And you said, someone said, people in this church, this church is rich. Did you say that, Apostle Gaia? Yes. He said, yeah. how many understatements? How many, how many understatements here from Apostle? He was talking about the visitors, and the same visitors, when they come to this church, they say that church that is made of rich. <laughs> Am I the only one who understands that statement? Bro, my sister, are you here? But they, some of the visitors, they say we were told to go to the church. That church is very rich. Yes, when people look outside, look from outside, they see a church of rich people. Now, that is very true. Because all of you own land. Don't you own land? All of you, or majority, are now owning cars. Hallelujah. Majority are owning homes. Majority are owning businesses. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we practicing the old religion? We are believers. Those who are getting born again, they were coming together to fellowship sharing the teaching together, sharing the apostles cleaned together, and doing what else? Doing what else, brethren? What, that, what were they coming to do? Breaking bread together? And doing what else? Can you? Yes, let's read that one. Doing what? Selling their possessions and the goods in order to do what? They gave. If anyone has. Now, because we are a church of rich people, <laughs> or we are a rich church, that's what we were told by visitors, some of the visitors who come here. That is indeed very true, and we thank God for that. Praise God. Now, we are going to the level of testing of our faith, whereby there is none among us who should be in need. There is none among us who should. So then, my question to you, even to myself, why is your brother's sister or sister's child uh, is at home because school fees have not been paid? Gloria, you tell me. Because that's what we are supposed to be doing. We were coming together, selling their possessions in order to share among themselves. Today, our chairman for Benevolence Fund, Elder Muturi here, together with his team member, Elder Gara here, together with the, the secretary there, the, 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 the CEO of the fund. If you don't know the Benevolence Fund, the CEO is <laughs> Pastor Mungai, Penina Mungai. They have to come here and talk at the top of their voice about benevolence. I am a culprit also because I'm, I think I'm in some alias. I'm making a confession. I'm in some alias. I'm going to clear them. <laughs> but why would they come and talk to the top of their voice about benevolence? Uh, and yet, that scripture says they were coming together not only to pray together, not only to, you know, fellowship together, but also to share their possessions. Praise God. Is it possible today that we can do a similar thing? Is it possible that we can sell our property for the sake of others in our midst? Is it possible? Let's see Acts 4.32-7. Acts 4.32-7. Acts for that the two to that seven. Acts, eh, what one go medium go up? Let's read together, brethren. All believers in one mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his, and they shared everything they had. Just pause there. Pause there before you go, you go ahead. Just go back. Go back to 32, please. All believers were in one heart 
Mwanma, no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they. If you come today, because I'm the one who struggled to buy my house or to build my house, I will protest and say, where were they when I was doing this work? Because you are the one who took a loan to buy you a car, you will protest and say, Apostle, where were they when I was taking the loan? When I was struggling to build, to build my business, where were they? Praise God. But today we are told faith without action is one as if you were. So we are believers of today. So all believers were one in art, one in no one claimed that any of possessions was A's, but they shared what they had together. Praise God. So I'm saying today, even if the plot is yours, well and good, we thank God that he gave you the grace. Even if the car is yours, even if that piece of business is yours, even if that job is yours, even that talent is yours, that is good. Praise God. But if you are to prove your faith, then be ready to release it to someone else who is in need and is in the family of believers. It's not just a gospel, but that's how it is. Praise God. So I want to challenge you as I challenge myself. If there will be a pronounced need in our ministry, and you know today you are in a position to answer that, please you are the answer to that person's prayer. Praise God. Do not go and fast and cry to God because those will be crocodile tears before God. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? There were no needs in that church or there were no needy persons among the believers that time because they practiced their faith by sharing everything, including the money from the sale of individual material possessions. Don't we remember the story of Ananiah and Sapphira? What happened to them, brethren? You know, by agreement, it was decided that all of us, because we are staying together, we are family of believers, we are going for the sake of the needy in our midst, for the sake of our brothers and sisters in our midst who have nothing to eat or to drink. We are going to sell everything and bring it in the house of God and we shall share equally as if it belong, as everything belonged to us. Amen? But there are two fellows who became clever. What happened to them? There are fellows who became clever. You need to ask yourself, did they have to reach that level? That someone, because they refused with their property, they had to die. That's a, a serious indictment, isn't it? But that's how serious it was. Because if believers are greened, there's none among us who will go hungry. There's none among us who will, who will walk naked. There's none among us who will sleep in the cold. There's none, of, none among us whose child will be chased away from school. Wali kubaliana hivo wapendwa. Lakini kuna watu waliamua hii shamba bwana. Hawa watu wako weko sisi tukilitafuta. Hawa wako weko tukilimua nyumba. Kwa nini tuuse tulete kila kitu? Wakawa welefu. But you know, there was instant punishment, brethren. Hallelujah. Well, there was simple, failing to do simple things. We agreed we bring everything together. And it is even today, it is in the house of God where people, well, God has been gracious these days. Ili adhabu yo nekanangi arakaraka, lakini, unawatu wapa tukikubaliana tusende kitu, awatendangi vile tunakubaliana. Niko edema siku edi. Na wako na ueso, they have the ability, the capacity to do it. But they don't do it because they want to come cheeky and clever before God. But the church that was there during the apostles' time, they sold everything in order to share, in order to show their faith by action and not just telling my brother, go, it is well with you. Go, God is going to open a door. How will God open a door and yet you are the door? Where's the mlango? How will God open, how, how else do you want God to open the door? Do you want to drop a key from heaven or tell you, brother, so and so, that's the door to go through and get your blessing? That's what you want God to do? No. God has placed you in that position. God has placed you in that 
opportunity so that you can become a, 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 an answer to your brother's prayer. Hallelujah. First Peter, also First Peter 4, 9 to 10, encourages hospitality among the brethren. How do we show hospitality uh, among us here? And not just showing hospitality, you show hospitality without grumbling. Because there are some who grumble. They are giving, but they are giving in protest. Hallelujah. They are giving in what? God says he loves a, a chief what? A chief giver. So when you are giving to your brother and to your sister, as you exercise your faith and you have prove your faith in action, please do it with a clean heart. Each one should use whatever gift. Now, whatever gift and it because that gift comes in various forms. It comes in wealth form, it comes even with talent form, on possession form, various forms. So the gift God has given you could be the wealth that God has given you. That gift could be even the position you occupy in the society. That gift could be the ability you have, the capacity you have. Now you are told each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. To do what? So when you eat alone, are you serving others? Or are you become others? When you're eating alone, are you, are you serving others? Praise God. To serve others what? Faithfully administering God's grace in, in its various... Yeah, you need to find out what are these various forms. And I've just mentioned to you, brethren, when we share our material things and gifts from God, it should be willing should from our willing hearts. I am teaching you today. I am ministering to you today. That's the best I can do. I will not come and coerce you. Because I am telling you, let's obey the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's see what 1 John 3, 16 to 20 says. Let's see what 1 John 3, 16. John, 1 John, 1 John 3. 1 John 3, 16 to, to 20. And basically, as we go to that scripture, the light is telling us we show love by actually sacrificing for the sake of others. And he gives an example of Jesus himself. And he says, Jesus, in order for us to be called born again Christians, in order for us to be saved, Jesus had to sacrifice. And he sacrificed his own body for the sake. So he exercised his faith by giving himself. He did not resist condemnation. He did not resist you know, crucifixion on the cross because he wanted to show faith. He wanted to put his faith rather into action. Praise God. And similarly, we as believers, we are being called to sacrifice on behalf of others who are in our midst, who are in need. In fact, the Bible says you lay your life for your fellow believer. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his, his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Praise God. Are we ready? And how often are we ready to lay our lives, to go extra mile for your brother or for your sister? How led are you to sacrifice? You know, when I talked about uh, what I do and I said, <laughs> Um, uh, maybe these friends of mine would not bring would not bring their cars to my workshop because I'm a couple of kilometers away. Apostle, maybe I put you to may I put you to test. No, I can't because you are my senior. But how are you willing to go if your brother, um, which which accepts that I don't appear as if I'm trying to create a motor? But what is wrong? You are my fellow brothers in the house of God. If I tell all of you, bring the castas, I come and start, I can also food in my house. Is it a crime? Now, I, I am saying, how, how willing are you to go extra mile for your brother? How? How willing are you to go extra mile for your sister? How? That's what, bro, we'll be sure your scripture there. We see what it says. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Isn't it? So what is this you are willing to give on behalf of your sister and your brother? Go on, you see what is there? 
If anyone wrestling together, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, eh, so I put it, who, who the apple, bro? Who the apple? Who the apple? Uh, now, where it is anyone, say, if I, that's it, if I have material So does material possession include this jacket I'm wearing? Does material possession include this? Does it even include the pair, pair of shoes I'm wearing? So if we say I have, if I see my brother and have material possession, material possession does not necessarily mean you have a house. Material possession does not necessarily mean you have a shamba or you have a car. It also means the jacket you have. That is what you have. Now, if you see a brother who is walking naked, give it to him, then you will be doing what that one says. So if I, if I have material possessions and see my brother in need and I don't have pity with him, how then can I say that I have, I have love or even I love God or you have a love of God in me? Praise God. Let's move on with that. Dear children, let us not love with what? Hey, once you to see Tell someone God bless you when you are materially blessed. Listen to this statement. Tell my brother or your sister God bless you when you have already done what? Huh? What are we saying, brethren? This has to sing today. I am saying, if you went to prayer, because you are going to go for ITBC meeting the day after tomorrow, are we not going to meet? When you owned us to pray, and there's a player item listed in your book. I hope you write them because it is good to write them so that next session you have time to thank God. If you don't have a book in your prayer sessions, I think you need to start doing that. It is going to help you to, to remind you where God has taken you from. Praise God. In that group of mine, uh, we started meeting on Tuesdays. That time I remember we were staying in Umoja. And we bought a prayer book. And the items that we prayed for, among them, there were so many. We met Gloria when we were just married. None of our family, we didn't have a child in no of time. So on the top of the list, we were praying for children and the mobile phones. Remember the mobile phones which were like this? And we were rotating. Okay? So in our oldest book, when you go there, you shall find a prayer letter which you read. Babus, they are praying for. <laughs> Babus are praying for a child. <laughs> Then Kemanis, another group is, uh, family is going to Kemanis. They are praying for mobile phone. Ire, Ire Nikuaya. And Mwangi's family is praying for a car. We go back to history and refer, and now we have a reason to thank God. So when you go there, when you hold your hands to pray together, when you finish, if there was a prayer item, Bogo, when there was a, if there is a prayer item that was listed, and you know in a position, bro, before you tell my, your fellow brother there, God bless you. Make sure that that need, please, has been addressed. Not by those others, by... Are we talking? Are we talking? That will make sense. That scripture there will make what? That dear children, let us not love with words and tongue, but, or tongue, but with actions and in... I want to conclude. I have left with four minutes. But before I conclude, I will have to mention these things. Showing love, as I said, until sacrifice for others. Jesus showed us this by giving his own life in order for us to be saved. We therefore must lay down our lives uh, for our fellow believers. If we have material positions as it were and deny our brothers who are in need, then we cannot claim to have the love of God within us. The book of Proverbs 3, 27, 20 says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Repeat after me. Do not withhold, it is there, do not withhold good from those who deserve when it is in your power. Do I need to interpret that? No. 
I don't have to interpret that. It goes further to say, do not defer. Okay, that is what I have written. But do not, you, you can, you can, you can uh, verse, that verse 27. Uh, let's read the next one. Do not say to your neighbor, Do not say to your neighbor, to your fellow brethren here, that come tomorrow when you have it that particular time. Praise God. So do not defer to give help or show kindness when you have something. Act immediately. Praise God. How many of us have told the others we shall, I will talk to you later? Have we told our fellow brothers we will, take, we will talk to you later? When they have told there is a need, they will tell you. I mean, you tell them what? And I will tell you what? That's just an escape route. <laughs> because you take kupea. Sasa bibiri nasema, kama wewe uko na uweso wa kupeana. Peana ndakika hii. Usimwambie njoo kesho. Usimwambie njoo kesho ku. Kesho kutwa. Praise God. I want to conclude by reading a very long scripture. <laughs> Let me conclude this way. Let's look at Deuteronomy. 15, 1 to 11. That's a long scripture, but I have to read it for you today. But as we go to Deuteronomy chapter number 15, one of the ways of accomplishing God's assignment, my, my brothers and sisters, is to make sure that we show love, compassion, and kindness to fellow believers. There should be no needs among the family of believers that should be left unattended. And let's consider Deuteronomy 15, verses 1 to 11. Uh, at the end of the seven years, you must cancel debts. Let's go on. This is how it is to be done. Every creditor shall cancel the loan he has made to his fellow Israelites. He shall require payment from, he shall not, he shall not require payment from his fellow Israelites or brother because the Lord's time for canceling debts has been proclaimed. You may require payment from a foreigner, but you must cancel any debt. You owe, uh, your brother owes you. However, now I'll pause at that point. Eh? How? God begins by addressing the time or season of setting people free from various indebtedness. Talks about cancelling the debt. Uh, if I know among us we rent each other, isn't it? Apa tu niapa nanda pe tu na kope shana nda pe gine. Lakini kuna wakati liku inafika musimu wa kusamia na de. Then, ata kama ulipatia mtu milioni moja bro, my sister, you must do what the Lord is saying. <laughs> you see now what we are called apostle and alcheka. For some of it is a difficult thing to do, but it's not me talking; it's the word of God talking. Debt cancellation. That's how you show your faith in action. Now listen to our statement. However, there should be no poor among you. So God has put us together as a family of believers. There should be no poor person among us. Are we together? How we are going to do it, I don't know, but we must do it. We must learn how to <laughs> eliminate the poor in the family of believers. Let's progress. So among this fellowship, that is the land of inheritance, the land that God has given us is this church here. Go on, please. If only, listen for the blessing, if only you fulfill, you fully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all these commands I am giving you today. For the Lord your God will bless you as he promised and he will lend you uh, you lend to many nations, but you'll borrow from. In other words, if you eliminate the poor among you, God is going to do what? We to bless you. You are going to lend to nations, and you shall borrow from none. So God is not just telling you to share. He's also telling you, if you share and you do it the right way, I am going to make you even more richer. Praise God. Because you are not going to borrow. He says you are going to learn. Rent. Praise God. So there must be no one poor among us because we are sharing and we are giving to one another. And if we do so, God is going to bless us more. And we will become lenders and not borrowers. You will rule over 
but none will rule over. So when you lend and you give to your brother, I mean when you take care of the needs of your brother, God is going to elevate you to another level. For the Lord your God will bless you as he promised. Yeah, go on please, let's progress. If, if there is a poor among you, among your brothers, in any towns of the land that the Lord has given, uh, the Lord, your God is giving you, do not be hard her or tight. That fist tight and square Don't be hard hearted or tight fisted toward your poor brother. Go on, please. Rather be and free lend him whatever he. I'm just reading for you. I'm not even going to explain the father. Be careful. Hmm? Hallelujah. Be careful not to have the week, this weekend thought. Okay? The seventh year, the year of cancellation debt is near. Unaniyarewa? Unatu anza kufikiria hivo. Akijua mwaka wakuenda kusamiana debt umekalibia, anaenda kwa dubia kebra mwaka wa saba ujafi, ambia mbroleta nilicho kukope. Don't be weekend, don't entertain weekend thoughts. Because the seventh year is near. So that you do not show ill will toward your, your needed brother and give him nothing. He may then appeal to the Lord against you. And you will, found, you will be found guilt of sin. Praise God. Give generously to him and do so without glancing hearts. Then because of this, the Lord, your God, will bless you in all your work. And in everything you put your heart to. There will always be poor people in the land. Do you know why God said there will always be poor people? You know, he is trying you to tell you in your midst, there will always be needy people. So that generous act, that act of putting your faith into action must always be there. Praise God. Remember, when Jesus was anointed by a woman with very expensive oil, there's someone fair, there who became jealous, isn't it? Wakaulisa, bona tuna waste this expensive oil kumuagia mtu mihu. Bona tusiuse pesa tupeana nini? Eh? Does that one resonate with this? Jesus said, you always have what? Amefanya kitusuri muachirie. Because you will always have what? The poor will always be there. That means we have a challenge, brethren, or we have the opportunity to share our faith, to exercise our faith by sharing with the need in our midst. There will be always poor people, therefore you must be willing and ready to share with your brother. I command you to be open-hearted toward your brothers and toward the poor and the need in your life. In your land. Praise God. Brethren, Hebrews 6, 10 to 11 says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and you continue to do so. When you help your brother and your sister in the house of God, God is not unjust to forget your good deeds. So you are not just going to help your brother, but it's a reward from God because God is watching at you. Remember the story of Cornelius. How did God recognize Cornelius? How did God have the Cornelius name put in the book of remembrance? It is because Cornelius, as much as was a centurion, Roman uh, uh, soldier, he was carrying the needs of the needy among the people. Praise God. And because of that, God noticed him from heaven, and his name was not just put in the book of life, but his name was put in the book of remembrance. And God had to send someone, God Peter, to him. Praise God. So God is not blind to your goodness. God is not blind to your good deeds. God is not blind to your actions of faith. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11.25 again says, A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others. I'm waiting for you to complete. You know this. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will also be, so if you refresh your brother, if you become a, a, an answer to your brother's sister, to your brother's prayer, 
if you become an answer to your sister's prayer, then you too, someone else, will become an answer to your prayer. Can I hear an amen? So say, repeat after me. I am a teacher. Repeat after me. If I become a <laughs> if I become an answer to someone's prayer, God will cause someone else to become an answer to my prayer. Because a generous man will prosper. And he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Amen? Therefore, my concluding statement is like this. Therefore, let us always be lending to support or to become the answer to our brother and our sister's prayer um, in every way we can. For Jesus said, it is more blessed to give. May God bless you. Thank you for listening to the word of God. I challenge myself that I pray that you go and challenge yourself as I challenged myself to become a, an answer to my brother's prayer, to my, my sister's prayer. And the Lord who is faithful is going to refresh you as well. Amen? Let's bow our hands and pray. Our Father, our God, we thank you for the sharing of your one this afternoon, dear Father. In accomplishing part of the assignment you have given us, Lord, is to take care of the needs of our brethren in our ministry who are in need. This is my prayer this afternoon that just as we have shared your word, the Lord, you are going to hearken to this word, we shall put it into practice, because faith without action is dead. Faith without deed is dead. Father, I pray that each one of us, even I who has shared your word, I will put that word into practice and discover how to become a blessing to the fellow brethren in the house of God. Help us today, dear Lord, to respond to your word. Father, when you respond to your word, you are going also to minister to us. Father, I thank you for allowing us to be in your presence and to receive your word. God bless your people, minister to us all. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord God do you good. May the Lord God bless you.